In this video, we'll be taking a look at the templates available in Risa 3D, which allow users to quickly generate complex geometries. So to access this tool, all we need to do is come to the Draw Elements section, click Templates, and we'll be prompted with a drop-down menu of options. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the Circular Arc Generation tool. And you'll see right off the bat, we're prompted with a graphical user interface that allows us to change the different parameters of this particular template. This template comes in handy for practical uh, applications such as buttresses, pre-engineered garages, or uh, even aircraft hangers. So in this case, we're gonna model the beginnings of an aircraft hangar frame. So to do that, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, change the arc radius to maybe something more along the lines of 40 feet. The sweep angle at 180 degrees is gonna accomplish what we need. And we can leave the polar origin at zero and then we can just go ahead and make sure we're using the section set that we'd like to use. So instead of using wide flanges, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to be tube steel. And let's say I wanna make it out of a square shape, maybe HSS 10 by 10 with a heavier wall. Go ahead and press OK to that. And then we just follow that up with choosing the right material that's associated with that and the correct design list here. Go ahead and choose square tube. And from here, I can just press OK. And once I press OK, we should have the first frame available to us. Now I can just dock this window in the center of our screen here. I can look at the rendered view to make sure I got the shape that I was looking for. So that's perfect. And now what I can do is just copy this over to start creating the beginnings of our aircraft hangar frame. So I would just go global, uh, 15 feet spacing, apply to selected, and now we see here that the frame has been moved over, and we could effectively just repeat this process for uh, the completion of the aircraft hangar frame. So the next template we're gonna take a look at is the 3D grid. So this template will come in handy if you ever need to model uh, storage racks, for example, or simple industrial structures, or equipment skids, things of that nature. So we'll see right when we open up this, uh, this generation tool here, we're gonna have uh, indication of the X axis, the Z and the Y. So what this is telling us is basically uh, how many increments we want in each of those directions. So I'm gonna use two increments for the X direction. I'm gonna use six for the Z direction, and then I'm gonna use three for the Y direction. Now I'm actually gonna go ahead and edit the uh, shapes that are going to be used to build this uh, industrial strength storage rack and all I need to do is go ahead and go to the shape button go to the tubes and I'm going to make it out of maybe let's say HSS uh, two by twos and I want to choose the correct material here press OK there and then I'm just going to go ahead and select the correct corresponding material pick my design list and set that as square tubes, press OK. And then here we have the lengths of each one of those increments. So it's gonna be uh, two five foot increments, which means it's gonna be 10 feet in, the, in total in the X axis. And then similarly for the Z axis and the Y axis. So at this point, I can just go ahead and press OK and we should have our structure generated for us. So I can just go ahead and dock this window in the center and then we can go ahead and look at this in rendered view and we can see here now that we've gone ahead and generated our uh, storage rack. Next up, we'll take a look at the geodesic dome template. So this template comes in handy whenever needing to model, for example, a dome for a, uh, let's say a nuclear reactor containment building or just any dome uh, structure for that matter. And then also spherical tanks. So in this first trial, we're gonna go ahead and create a dome structure. So to do that, we're gonna create a dome height. In this case, we'll choose 15 feet. We can also sub-mesh the, uh, the fineness of the triangle makeup. So we can change that from two to four. So we'll go ahead and use four in this case. And then we also have some options for the actual sphere shape. So we can go anything from a tetrahedron to an octahedron to an icosahedron. And uh, obviously this shape is going to get closer to a spherical shape. I'll go ahead and change my polar origin to zero, zero, zero. And then since again, we're gonna be using a, making a dome out of this, we want the radius to go ahead and match the dome height. So then let's say we want to make our dome out of concrete. 
but we want to use 4,000 normal weight. We just click from this drop down menu and maybe we want to change this to a 10 inch concrete thickness. So at this point, we just press OK and we have our dome created for us. So I'll go ahead and dock this in the middle. I can render it and now we can see here we have our plate structure uh, modeled of concrete plates for our dome. Uh, the same way we can actually create, I'll go ahead and delete this. We can create a sphere structure using the same tool by actually just making the dome height double that of the radius input. So now when I change that to 30 and the radius is set to 15 and I press OK, we've now created a spherical element for ourselves made of the same materials. The next template we'll take a look at is the cylinder template. So we'll go ahead and select that one from our drop down menu. And so this one really come in handy whenever needing to model uh, grain silos or for example industrial exhaust stacks. This will come in handy. So uh, let's go ahead and choose our rotation axis. So we can go ahead and use the Y since I want that to be my vertical axis. And then we have some options here for the sweep increments. So if I wanted to, um, let's go ahead and change this to 360 degrees for the sweep angle first. And then this gives us an idea of how many increments around that circular shape the program will use to create the, the circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and just max this out. Maybe go to 100 to really refine uh, the circular shape of this. And then the vertical increments I can change to, let's say I wanna make this uh, 50 foot tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and use, uh, sorry, I'll change this to one foot and then I'd make my, ax my vertical axis increments set to 50. You can also add members for in the vertical direction or you can take them off. I'm gonna go ahead and remove them in this case. Uh, in the same way you can add members around the radius. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off because I want to just make my silo in this case out of plates. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my material here by selecting aluminum and maybe bring this down to something more uh, reasonable. I'll just say a quarter inch in this case. And then we can increase the radius as well to let's say something more along the lines of, let's say 40 feet. And we can even add uh, fluid loads to model uh, whatever resources are gonna be stored in this tank. And then from here, we can simply press okay. And the program will go ahead and generate that cylinder for us. So I'll go ahead and just click out of this window and we can view this in an isometric view. And then we can also turn off the nodes and render it to see what we're looking at here. And now we have our grain silo generated for us. Lastly, we'll take a look at the rectangular tank with stiffeners template. This particular template comes in handy for modeling subterranean water tanks or pump stations or even above ground versions of both of those. So to start off with, we can take a look that we have a length, width, and height defined here for us, as well as a plate dimension. So we'll go ahead and fill in these inputs. Let's do a 15 foot tank height, a let's say 20 foot width, and then maybe a 40 foot length. And then I'm okay with using the one foot max plate dimension for my sub mesh. And then we can also add stiffeners to our tank as well. If we wanted to, we can do top, bottom, and even intermediate stiffeners. But for my case, I'm gonna go ahead and leave these unchecked. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also change the different material uh, for those stiffeners uh, by using this drop down menu here. And then we can also add fluid load. So if this was a subterranean uh, structure, you could have the soil loads applied from the outside in, or if it was a water tank, you could have the fluid loads applied from the inside out. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave this as a default. Maybe change the depth to 10 feet. And our plates, we can change, uh, let's say in our case, I wanna use a, f a 4,000 normal weight concrete. And then here's how you change the thickness of the plates. So in my case, I'll use a 10 inch concrete. At this point, we can just press okay. And the program will go ahead and generate that for us with the loads on it. So now we can view our generated structure by going to isometric view and turning on the rendered shape. So here we can see we have a two scale modeled version of our tank that we've generated. And then I can also display the generated loads.
This concludes our look at model generation templates. For more information about RISA 3D, please visit risa.com.